So welcome to today's live. I'm super excited uh, to welcome Shosh. Uh, she's a curly, Welsh curly girl. Um, so many of you already know her. Uh, but as you know, I have coarse curly hair. But today we are talking to Shosh who has fine curly hair. We are completely almost opposite hair types. So we want to deep dive into uh, discussing how we care for our curls and how we style our curls. And if you're here to learn about more about your curly hair journey, whether you have fine hair or coarse hair, you are in the right place. So uh, a little bit about Shosh. She has an amazing voice in the community. If you've uh, seen her posts, they're so, so detailed. She's very um, sciencey. <laughs> So she gets into the nitty gritties of, of her topics and it's so incredibly intelligent because it's easy to understand also the way she talks about all the sciencey things. <laughs> so, so that's why I couldn't wait to chat with her and compare our curly hair routines. So yeah, Shosh, would you like to say something to introduce yourself? Sure. Well, um, so yeah, I think Liz has done an amazing job of introducing me and being very, very kind. I'm Shosh aka Welsh Curl Girl. Um, I have ridiculously fine hair and I've spent the last sort of five years trying to work out how to care for it. Um, at some point during that journey, I trained as a hairstylist, but I'm not actively cutting hair just because last this last year has been an interesting one. Uh, but I do want to revisit it and also train to be a curl specialist. So lots kind of in that space, which is, yeah. Thanks, Liz. That was a really nice introduction from you. <laughs> oh, yeah, okay. yeah. Okay, let's let's get into it. I think we can all agree that whether we have fine hair or coarse hair, uh, finding the right products can be a little bit of a challenge. So I'm still experimenting with different techniques, like with the lens, and and it's been a ever evolving process ever since I've started embracing my curls. So I want to ask you, Shosh, what are your some of the biggest challenges you faced with your fine curls? hair and how you overcame them also perfect um so it took me a while to it, it took me a long while to really understand that actually fine curly hair needs to be treated in a different way to coarse curly hair and i spent an awful lot of time obviously when i first started out my journey on instagram and places um youtube and etc etc and tried following a lot of styling routines from the big creators that were available at the time and a lot of that was about adding softness because curly hair is supposed to be dry mm -hmm. and actually what i discovered was my biggest challenge was that my my fine very very baby fine curly hair is naturally very soft <laughs> So I often found that I was over conditioning my hair. I didn't have much volume or definition. It was getting fluffy. It was just a bit of a pain in the bottom, to be honest, um, simply because I was treating it like it was coarser hair than it actually was. Um, and the biggest challenge was sussing out how to combat that uh, that softness that my hair naturally has anyway yeah. um and that has that sort of took me down the road of going in the complete opposite direction of what a lot of the recommendations for curly hair are so for example um d deep condition your hair once a week i don't remember when i de last <laughs> deep conditioned my hair yeah. <laughs> literally um using only use a clarifying shampoo once once every two weeks to once a month was another thing that was around uh, when i was first starting out and i use a really strong shampoo every time i wash my hair now and it's been a journey but that i think was the biggest challenge realizing that that was the problem and then addressing that if that makes sense oh yeah yeah and i i think for me as coarse curly hair my my biggest challenge was how to make my hair soft. <laughs> we should combine both our hairs and then we've got like the middle ground, shouldn't we? Yes. <laughs> the media porosity life. Like. <laughs> so um, for me, as, as coarse curly hair, I, I have to depend on heavy creams mm -hmm. to soften my hair and also gel to get definition. Like I cannot do without a hair cream. Yeah. Uh, but mm -hmm. I know like how how do you keep your fine hair curls defined without weighing them down um 
so complete opposite end of the spectrum to you i think i steer away from a lot of heavier conditioning products mm -hmm. um i tend to gravitate towards very light products that won't won't weigh my hair down essentially and mm -hmm less conditioning products that don't soften my hair as much yeah. um i tend to rely on heavily cleansing products so for my shampoos they're all heavily cleansing and i also tend to rely on products that will add sort of grit to my hair and sort of make it less soft if that makes sense so almost add texture to my hair um oh, yeah. so yeah complete opposite end of the spectrum <laughs> see, I think. it's really interesting isn't it how much really? texture sort of impacts it <laughs> oh my gosh you know it, it's good that you said something about adding grit because my hair is already gritty <laughs> like i don't need gritty products at all like give me the softening things <laughs> and then you are over here trying to unsoften yeah, it because absolutely <laughs> It's a really funny thing, isn't it? Because um, I, I personally think that texture impacts the hair a lot more than perhaps curl pattern and coarser hair, obviously adding in the softness and really sort of getting that because you've got a lot of texture and strength to your hair, making it feel less textured. Whereas my hair, honestly, it, it if I don't plaster it in some kind of texture spray it feels like it's about to drop out completely i have to um confess that uh a week ago i went and got a gloss treatment at the salon which like adds it's a treatment to soften the hair so but but uh, some people were asking me you know what, what what is your review what do you think i'm like okay wait a minute this thing softens your curls so if you already have soft hair then there is no point in doing don't it either. yeah absolutely. absolutely don't coffee or like just don't go and fall for trends just because your favorite color yeah. hair blogger if is it, saying it not, yeah absolutely if it's not broke don't try and it's like you know bond rebuilders for example yeah. if your hair doesn't have damage yeah. really much why go <laughs> So like uh, speaking of products, because um, you just said that you like to go for lightweight products and heavier cleansers and products that add grit. So are there like any specific ingredients that you like to avoid or, or what you look for in your products? Specific ingredients. Specific ingredients. So if I'm buying a shampoo, I will look for sodium alephin sulfonate, um, yeah. which is a very strong surfactant. Yeah. Um, if you have drier coarser hair it can perhaps make your hair feel dry but that's sort of what i look like look for yeah um if my hair doesn't feel really cleansed following a shampoo then i know the wash day is going to fall on its head um i tend to avoid i i don't don't avoid necessarily oil oils and butters because yeah. there's nothing wrong with oils and butters necessarily yeah. i tend to look for lighter products overall so if there's oils and butters that are in say the top five ingredients mm. i might sort of shy away from that a little bit because i know that they're going to be more concentrated in that but equally not all oils and butters are made equal so okay. some are lighter than others so yeah. it's it's kind of finding the balance i do tend to look for less conditioned conditioning um less conditioning agents within products so um yeah. i i i don't i don't i don't think it's a bad ingredient but i don't use them i don't use silicones because yeah. i just find that my hair doesn't need them yeah. um they're not necessarily a bad group of ingredients but i just don't find i need them yeah. um i tend to look for in a gel for example um because i do love a really stronghold gel can't use much of it but i do love yeah. a stronghold gel yeah. i'll look for something like polyquaternium 69 yeah. which is a really stronghold polyquat yeah. that keeps me there for days um and then to be honest i'm a big i'm, I'm gonna break every every curly rule but i love hairspray hairspray just makes me happy it's it just it's a good thing that we have trust worthy hairsprays now yes. right yeah so like do you want to um share some of your favorite hair hair cleanser um sure. and hairspray like what sure um going on a whole range of budgets um 
in terms of cleansers, uh, one of my, I, I go through phases where I use one product consistently for ages and then I'll get bored and move on to something else. But um, one of my favorite cleansers at the moment is the Umberto Giannini Detox uh, Shampoo, which is, um, it comes in this this long black tube and it comes out black actually as well. Yeah. But it's a really, really cracking shampoo and very, very budget friendly. Wow. Um, on the more expensive end, I love the Way Detox Shampoo. That's a fantastic shampoo. Um, they have a fine curl shampoo, but I wasn't a massive fan of that. I didn't find it quite cleansing enough. Okay. In terms of hairsprays, the Curlsmith hairspray is phenomenal. I love that hairspray so much. Oh my gosh. And it I, smells I, so I, awesome. I go through bottles of it. <laughs> yeah. No, I was just saying, like, I find that um, my coarse curly hair um, also cannot do too much softness because then, then it'll just weigh down because it gets yeah. easily weighed down so i also have to look for lightweight products but in particular i cannot use products with glycerin in uh, humidity mm -hmm. i mean th it, there's been a conflict about this but for me yeah. it's like this is moisturizing but yeah with the humidity it adds more moisture then it curls way down so is is it something that you struggle with also or is it okay with you i did at one point i i remember having major issues with anything with glycerin in um it seems to have abated i really couldn't tell you why because it's as humid as ever in the uk um it humid and rainy is generally what we do um but no i think I've managed to find a balance whereby the products that I follow up with perhaps almost counterbalance the, because I'm styling for so much hold and so much grit, yeah. which obviously you can't because you've already got that. Yeah. I think I've found that kind of level pegging where actually it doesn't really affect. And because I don't leave much in my hair. So, yeah. You know, I don't leave in a leave in. Yeah. That was a sentence and a half. I don't have a leave in that stays in my hair. You know, I'll generally just pop in a gel or a hairspray or something like that. I'm not, and, and then I don't use much of it because I can't because it weighs my hair down. And how about we, like, um, you know, just for the sake of the audience, if you can tell us just what is one of your go to wash day routines, like from the beginning to end, like what would you do? My favorite wash day routine at the moment that always guarantees me really good wash day results and days. I'm on day three at the day three. No, I wash my hair on Sunday. So I'm yeah, day three, day three at the moment. So no, day one is wash day, day four, day three, day four. Oh, I don't know. Um, guarantees me. Day four. I think so. I wash it on Sunday and it's, it's still. I, I teach yeah. during the week, so I wash it on Sunday and then I yeah. wash it on Thursday again. So I think, I think I'm day four. Um, but this wash day routine was strong shampoo. So that for me on this occasion was the Umberto Giannini Detox shampoo. Mm -hmm. Then a leave-in um, and I use that instead of a rinse out conditioner. Um, and on this occasion, it was the Flora and Curl Activating Lotion, which I love. That's a great product. Yes. Uh, really lightweight. And then I rinse all of that out of my hair. <laughs> I know that sounds counterintuitive, but I'm using the leave-in in place of my rinse out. So I'm using that to condition and detangle my hair, essentially. So I'll detangle my hair with the leave-in in, then rinse it all out. Um, and then what I normally do is without any product in my hair, I'll define it wet. And by that, I mean, I'll break my fingers through to break up all the clumps. And then I'll do a bit of scrunching to sort of get the curls kind of going again. Um, then I'll scrunch out some water, um, usually with a microfiber towel. And then I spritz a bit of hairspray over just so that it sort of maintains its shape diffuse for a bit, add a bit more hairspray. And generally with the hairspray, I'll add it as I feel I need it. So yeah. if my hair is starting to feel a bit soft, I'll stop diffusing at that point and I'll add a little bit more hairspray. Um, and yeah, that's that's the routine. And it works really well <laughs> for me wow. anyway. Well, that's like a totally opposite. Because for me, it's like I, I need to clarify because uh, I use the heavier creams right to style yeah. so i have to clarify yeah uh, but because i clarify i have to deep condition yeah it's like i 
and then um because i did all that i have to use a cream because now i need to just complete the routine because <laughs> yeah, this, so like okay anyway do you have any uh tips uh, for preventing or dealing with product buildup? the biggest thing you can do is making sure that you use a decent shampoo yeah. whether that's every wash day or whether that is you know every every few wash days depending obviously on your hair type i everything has the potential to build up there are ingredients in all of our products that have the potential to build up especially if you're using conditioning products because conditioning agents cling to the hair shaft and require a shampoo to get them off essentially if you're struggling with build up yeah. either you can be incorporating that shampoo more often the the um clarifying shampoo or use a little bit of less product because it might simply be that you're overdoing the product and therefore weighing your hair down i find lots of people um you know weighed down hair is essentially because you use too much product which in essence is build up in and of itself isn't it so you know trying to use less product is is depending on your hair type obviously because <laughs> we're opposite ends ends of the spectrum aren't we i just i i find it fascinating that your routine is so incredibly different to mine it's brilliant no really like so for example from for my course curly hair i know that you use a leave-in conditioner in place of a conditioner and then you rinse it out also yeah. but for me I, I need a mask that is a deep conditioner and then after i rinse it out i need a conditioner after i rinse it out i need a curl cream <laughs> I it's I think so, the big anyway, I can avoid breakage like so like what do you do to avoid damage so I think protecting your hair is about the um almost about the amount of conditioner in it isn't it um so the way I I'm very very careful with how I detangle my hair a lot of people experience a lot of breakage because of how they detangle their hair and I personally I detangle my hair in the shower with the conditioner in my hair and i look for conditioners that have a decent level of slip and that that is generally a leave-in leave-ins yeah. can have a decent level of slip and i think that is key for me um i think if you're finding yourself getting breakage while you're shampooing mm -hmm. uh one way around that and again it's down to having tangles in the hair and pulling and then finding breakage um one way around that is to actually detangle your hair dry um there are studies i know i'm going against every single curly rule i, I think you promise there's the studies back stuff up. there's a study um that showed that actually detangling your hair wet with lots of conditioner in definitely reduces the stress on your hair yeah. but your hair is weaker when wet and therefore it's a balancing act so if you're finding that you're putting your shampoo in and then experiencing loads of breakage because of the level of tangles in your hair mm. detangle your hair carefully dry before you then wet it and put the shampoo in because otherwise you're shampooing tangled hair and you'll end up with more breakage essentially True. other things that i absolutely avoid doing 110 percent is sleeping with my hair wet that oh, is yeah, no, no, all no. fire for damage yeah. or leaving my hair like i'm i'm i have major issues with wet hair on my neck so i always diffuse my hair anyway but leaving your hair wet for too long can also cause damage yeah. you know the the more you damage your hair the more breakage you are likely to experience yeah. when you know Liz, I'm sure you, you you bleached your head. You oh, yeah. bleached your entire that was head. Blind, two years ago. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> that porous um, damage Good. essentially definitely exacerbates the breakage. Yeah. When you're dealing with more porous hair, you need to then pile on a little bit more of the conditioner to make sure. Did you find that when your hair was bleached, you had to use more conditioner? As long as as i was doing the bond repair treatments mm. it was okay yeah but the 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 week i didn't do it that's it just i oh. had to struggle oh, yeah it was a struggle yeah so like more expensive products extra products other than the normal basic things it was it was a nightmare yeah <laughs> i i bleached and colored my hair for a little while as well and actually for me it roughened up the cuticle so it made it a little bit easier to manage until i over processed it okay. 
and then it was oh, horrible mm. nightmare so yeah so i guess we have something in common like oh. we do that <laughs> so like, definitely uh, i know that uh fine hair can struggle with volume like for me i don't have a problem with volume because your hair becomes gloriously <laughs> big <laughs> um cuz i mean it it's naturally gritty so it 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 has a natural volume yeah. so like um but but because i have to layer products also then you know i i have that struggle with volume mm. like the weighing down of course so mm. like i'm curious to know like how do you keep that balance like how do you keep that bounce and volume with fine curls so i think there is a balance to it mm. I remember desperately earlier on desperately trying to achieve the size of hair that I saw on Instagram and with my hair it's simply not possible. Mm -hmm. Um there is ways of improving volume but you also need to have realistic expectations of what your hair can achieve. Do you know what I mean? So I think the one thing for me that really improves my volume is tackling so i have very very silky soft roots and they pretty curly but they just they fall flat because they are very very soft hmm. so again tackling that for me is a big thing you know a texture spray on my roots or a hairspray on my roots or something like that really helps with volume um other things less conditioning <laughs> anything that's going to weigh my hair down goes out the window yeah. Yeah. um so less conditioning less product that doesn't mean no product but less product i find that applying trying to get as much water out of my hair before i diffuse it helps as well yeah. and trying to speed up the diffusing process also helps because water's heavy isn't it, it? Is. so it automatically and your roots tend to stay wet longer so yeah. it automatically yeah. drags them down so yeah i think those are my big things trying to dry my roots as quickly as possible trying to then texturize my roots a little bit and then not put also length like my my yeah. roots get my, my, i get less volume as my hair gets longer Same. simply because Same. it's heavier Same like we we have that in common again i'm i'm actually so excited to find something in common i love that but like so do you think like as a stylist uh maybe if if people got like, like more layers will that help in volume because you know people like their long hair so yeah so what would I you say think it's a balance if you've got lots and lots of hair yeah. then yeah layers and, and even if it lots and lots of fine hair so very dense fine hair yeah. layers can absolutely help because they help to sort of give that circular shape if you've got less hair and it's fine i i'm so i've lost quite a bit of hair over the last couple of years uh, experienced quite a bit of hair loss and i found when my hair was denser having layers on longer hair wasn't so much of an issue as when my hair was less dense because taking out that so taking out that last layer of hair yeah. meant that actually it looked really straggly and i didn't have yeah. much hair in that final layer which then you know it's a balancing act as to whether you want the length or whether you feel like that's okay and and you don't mind how that looks for me mm. it was it felt it didn't feel good and i, I it wasn't for me okay. it's, so it's i really think it's subjective then yeah yeah like, i think there's it no is. rule like okay you have to get layers no so. no no absolutely and i think i know um uh Leanne, oh gosh what's her her tag name curly cast uh, yes curly okay. cast yeah. so she has blunt hair and she has fabulous volume yeah. and i remember she got a load of layers cut in at one point and her hair she was really really unhappy with it it wasn't as voluminous because she'd taken all of the weight out here and it just looked very sparse here and then sort of oh. and and she's got lower density hair so i think it really depends on your hair type and density. you know what, what your, yeah yeah what your goals are as well and and what okay. you're happy with so moving away from philosophical issues like density 
<laughs> let's talk about something practical like how does your nighttime routine differ from course kali hai like for me i cannot pineapple and i just shove everything in my bonnet but sometimes i also need a scarf and then a bonnet and that's like for extra preservation especially like in the winter time so yeah. for you do you need something like that how how is how is your nighttime routine for your girl protect i look like a scarecrow when i wake up regardless of what i use to protect my hair my my hair will be out here <laughs> and uh, it will be very stretched out um and that is regardless of what protection i use and i've tried many many things it's worse if i pineapple yeah. because it'll stretch out all of my under layers it's worse right. if i um if i just sleep on a silk pillowcase yeah. I, i might as well be done <laughs> um a bonnet is too loose yeah. um for my hair density it doesn't hold it in close enough so it stretches out more because yeah. obviously i'm tossing and turning in the night the best thing i found for me is a buff um and that holds everything quite close to my head and it stops it being stretched out quite so much i always expect to have to refresh in the morning generally actually that constitutes steam i love a steam refresh and that can be as simple as leaving your hair down in the shower because steam resets the hair so i'll go into the shower with my hair yeah. literally all stretched out and i'll come out and it looks a lot better and then i'll spot oh. refresh if i need to yeah it, actually, yeah for me when i hear that it's like okay as your hair loses texture and pattern easily but it can come back just as easily also yeah very very easily yeah it right? springs up it's steam anything like that it springs back up so it's so it's opposite for me because <laughs> i get into steam and that's it i this i have to do the whole wash day again including no. oh my i can steam my hair at all no steam for me <laughs> Oh nightmare honestly I genuinely my refresh is just stand in the shower and keep the hair out the water <laughs> and it goes back to exactly how I want it so today you know cuz for me okay I can keep the curls longer but it also takes a lot of effort to get those curls in the first place and for you oh. okay you lose it easily but you can gain it easily as well it's it's yeah. beautiful <laughs> okay so- Oh, I know that we we had said okay it'll only be 30 minutes so we are actually down to the last two questions if you will allow me uh what's the one piece of advice you wish you had earlier about managing your curly hair I'd love to know your thoughts okay because sorry for me I I wish had I had um, accepted my hair type and I wish I had deep conditioned more often and sooner it had it makes such a big difference for me the deep conditioning mask like it can have protein also but either way what is it for you i wish someone had told me earlier on hmm. that your hair's not, not dry stop conditioning it so much <laughs> Just the opposite to you <laughs> um i wish i wish that curl product companies tend to say curly hair is dry yeah. you need to moisturize moisturize you need to moisturize and i wish someone had said to me actually that's not true of all curly hair it depends on your texture i wish someone had said that to me and i think it would have made things a lot easier from the beginning that's i agree i agree with that um um now i just um, for those who are wanting to embrace their natural texture now whether they are fine or coarse like what are the final words or tips that you know your words of encouragement for them style for the hair you have not the hair you want <laughs> <laughs> oh, <yes. laughs> so by that i mean as you said you know when you embraced your coarse texture you found that things got a lot easier and a lot better yeah. embrace your texture embrace your um if you have some damage to your hair know that you're going to have to tackle that you don't necessarily need to know your exact 
porosity but if you have some damage you know know that you're going to need to tackle that and embrace that don't get too het up in something's not working and and I get, I get a lot of messages from people who are very like upset that um you know th their routine isn't working and what i find when we pick it apart is often they'll have started with a routine yeah. and then it all got more and more and more complicated because they're trying to fix something yeah. and when you strip it back and simplify it often and and take into account their hair texture and if they've got any damage and things like that mm -hmm. it suddenly starts falling into place yeah. so i think embrace your own hair and work to accommodate the hair characteristics that you have on your head <laughs> because it, it it's not I necessarily going to change <laughs> 100 percent agree to like for anyone uh trying to get into this curly hair lifestyle uh i would say yes have patience because um mm. embracing your own texture or finding the right routine or finding the right products it can take time because Absolutely. there's so much of trial and error yeah. so but 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 once you do find that routine and you have day four hair like it's so worth it yeah it is it is yeah. worth it it definitely definitely is i feel so i feel so much better when my hair is done i'm not gonna lie it's just, it's just one of those things that makes me feel good yes um and it took a very long time to find what worked for me yeah but as soon as i started styling for my hair mm -hmm. things started falling into place so yeah it's it's a it's a funny one isn't it don't don't yeah. necessarily you can have your favorite creators and this that and the other on instagram and this that and the other but if you have like it it would be similar to me trying to follow your routine which just <laughs> No. <laughs> or are you trying to follow mine? <laughs> oh my gosh, no. <laughs> Can you imagine? Maybe. Do it no, next time. Yeah. <laughs> just, just for fun. We should. So, we should. Just for giggles to see what yeah. happens. What routine. <laughs> so, um, thank you, Josh. This, this has been such an insightful chat. And so I really hope it will be. Like, I, I do really hope whoever uh, joined in are uh, uh, listening. Uh, yeah, I hope it helped you watching. So, but remember, whoever's watching, whether your curls are coarse or fine, remember it's all about finding what works for you. And um, I'm going to plug in something. Okay. Like, if you guys need personalized, personalized help, I offer one on one consultations. So, feel free to like get in touch if you want to book a session also um, i'm going to post this so let us know in comments if you have any other questions or what is your biggest challenge right now i was going to say if someone's asking any time questions but if we say pop any questions in the comments on the we'll put it on our our grids yeah. and yes. we will take some time to answer them i think that's probably the easiest way of doing oh, yes. it isn't it is like whether it's fine hair, coarse hair, wavy hair, anything. Just like put it in the comments and then we'll get back to you. Okay. Uh, sorry. Thank you so much, thank thank you so much again. Okay. <laughs> Bye. See you soon. Bye.